I said we have got there in May. We flew around England to get a, acquainted with the lay of the land and uh, to learn how to fly formations because we had to, we had to assemble in such a s small area. There was so many air bases in England, you had to be careful how you flew. We flew what you call a buncher signal. It was a signal you could pick up, uh, you know, over your, over your headset. And uh, we did that till the uh, early part of June. And one morning we got up, it was rainy and drizzly. This was 6th of June. It was drizzly and rainy, and they came and picked us up as normal. We thought we were going to fly just a regular training mission. Went down there and, and had, our, had our breakfast. Went into the interrogation room. Everyone was sitting there, and they had this map up on the wall with a curtain over it. They pulled the curtain back, and they said, Gentlemen, today we're invading the continent. That was my first mission. That morning, it was September the 13th. We were flying to uh, Ludwigshaw in Germany to the IG Forbin Chemical Works. It's a huge chemical compound at, uh, across the river from Mannheim. Uh, the Rhine River ran through between Mannheim and Ludwigshaven. And they, uh, we weren't bothered with fighters. There were fighters in the vicinity and the other groups had problems with them, but we, they didn't attack our group, but the uh, anti-aircraft fire was intense. And over the target, uh, we lost a plane. One plane went down. We got number three engine shot out. And then we had a, a, had a round of uh, the 88 aircraft round went through our number four fuel tank and went on up, on through it and on up in the air before it exploded. Had it exploded below or uh, in the wing, we, we would be, I wouldn't be talking today. But it went on through and exploded, so we lost all of our fuel out of that number four tank. Had a good engine, but it had no fuel. Number one and two was, were fine. So the, as I said, there were fighters in the vicinity, so we tried to stay up with the group. Rather than straggle, had we straggled, we were in trouble. During the time we were trying to stay up with the group, the engines overheated, and we had to reduce power and try to cool them down, and they began to cut in and cut out. We began, we lost altitude. We'd go in, we'd get down in the clouds and kind of hedge hop through the clouds to, to stay away from the fighter planes. We knew we wasn't going to make it back. If the engine had been running properly, we would have came on back home. But they were cutting out on us, and we couldn't get them, we couldn't get them cooled down enough where they wouldn't cut out. We flew, uh, Flew for about an hour and a half, and losing altitude all the time, and, and we threw out everything they had, guns, ammunition, flak suits, anything that wasn't, uh, that wasn't bolted down. And uh, I told the pilot, I said, uh, I'm gonna go back and drop the ball turret, and uh, see if that'll, you know, lighten the load enough. Maybe we can stay airborne, he said, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna be able to stay airborne. But uh, so I went back, and they, then they called on the inter intercom and said, uh, uh, we're, we're going to kind of take a vote whether we're going to bail out or we're going to stay with it. And uh, the pilot didn't make that decision. So uh, I, was, I think I may have been the first one that said, uh, I believe I'm on, I, I'll stay with it as long as those engines are running, I'm going to stay with it. And uh, that's what we did. Most of them agreed with that. Brussels had been liberated five days. Paris had been liberated, I don't know how long, but we set a course to Brussels. All the time we're going, I'm back there trying to drop that ball turret, and we're, we're descending all this time. We were about a mile, somewhere around a mile from the air base. We hit the ground at, uh, little, in a turnip field with the wheels down. Never never had a chance to retract them. And well, luck would have it, you know, uh, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't ground loop. The wing didn't hit the ground, it spin around. 
uh, we kind of rocked and the dust flew and we rolled but, and went through, a, went across the ditch, went through, uh, went down. Instead of going through a fence, we went down the fence. We gathered up a lot of wire, you know, but uh, it finally came to rest and uh, we got out of it. Uh, the, the people in Belgium at that time were jubilant. They'd just been uh, liberated and they were dancing and every night there was a dance somewhere and they put us up in a, in a nice hotel at, at one of the fine squares and uh, we enjoyed ourselves and they treated us uh, royally and we spent the night with them and, uh, and celebrated and the next day uh, they flew in from uh, with a C-47 and picked us up. I think it was a good Lord, really do. Uh, we could do all we could do. Uh, wasn't much really you could do, except just kind of draw up and take it. And when you've done all you can do and it was still a popping and uh, you thought you were going to get hit any second, then uh, then you call on uh, the good Lord to you say, good Lord, I've done all I can do. And uh, if we get through this, and that, you'd have to help us, you know. And I think that's, I think that's uh, had, had, had a lot to do with it, really do.